Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag, cross, and high, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall a team be champions, known throughout the land. Wheaties, mm-hmm. breakfast of champions, bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Listen, fellas and girls. You know what I'd like to do right now? Well, I'll tell you. I'd like to ring bells and blow whistles. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Sound Effects Man. Yes, today is really good news day. Here's the story. In the first place, today Jack Armstrong starts on a brand new radio adventure. One of the most exciting and dangerous he's ever had. I know you won't want to miss a single episode of this thrilling Jack Armstrong adventure. In the second place, we're welcoming back a lot of Jack Armstrong's old friends. We're mighty glad to have you back with us. And there's a very special welcome for the fellows and girls who are hearing this program for the first time today. We hope that you'll all get a lot of thrills and real pleasure out of Jack Armstrong's newest adventure and that you'll make the acquaintance of those extra good Wheaties flakes right away. You know, right now, at the very beginning of a new school year, and at the start of a brand new Jack Armstrong series, is a mighty fine time to start making Wheaties your regular year-round breakfast dish. So, would you do this for me? Would you eat a breakfast of champions the next four mornings in a row? Then ask yourself... If you've ever found any other breakfast dish that gives you as much real pleasure and satisfaction as this combination of Wheaties, milk, and fruit, chances are you'll want to climb right on the Wheaties bandwagon with the rest of Jack Armstrong's friends. And it's my bet that you'll say Wheaties have a flavor that's absolutely different and better than any other breakfast dish you've ever tasted. And now, Jack Armstrong. The All-American Boy. After their thrilling experiences on Easter Island, Jack, Billy, and Betty have returned to Hudson to continue their studies. Uncle Jim is back in Hudson, too, and is engaged in experiments in developing a new type of power so that his airplanes can fly tremendous distances without stopping to refuel. Right now, Jack is busy, too. In his workshop at home, he is hurriedly putting the finishing touches on his new shortwave receiver. So Billy and Betty are driving out alone to Uncle Jim's office at the airplane factory with an important-looking letter that they've just picked up at the post office. Listen. Say, Betty, this looks like an important letter for Uncle Jim. Sure hope he's at the airplane factory. It ought to be important, Billy, with all those stamps on it. I'll say. Came all the way from the Philippines in a clipper ship. Gosh, wouldn't I like to make that trip? Well, I hope it doesn't mean that Uncle Jim will have to go to the Philippines. I hope it does, Betty. Then maybe we can go with him. Oh, there's the factory. But, Billy, the shades to Uncle Jim's office are pulled down. Hey, that's too bad. If he isn't in, we're going to have to find out where he is and take this letter to him. Oh, I think he's in. I just saw someone pull the shade aside and look out for a moment. That's funny. Uncle Jim never has his shades down when he's in. Well, here we are. Get out, Betty, and we'll see who's in Uncle Jim's office. Uncle Jim ought to be here this time of day. Oh, I don't know, Betty. He's been spending a lot of time experimenting with atomic power in that big laboratory that's built in the middle of Knobs Hill. His door's closed. We better knock. I guess he's not in. Hey, wait a minute. The door's not locked. Let's look inside. Nope, he's not here. Gosh, what's been going on in here? What? Billy, look. Everything is topsy-turvy. I'll say it is. Look at Uncle Jim's desk. All the drawers pulled out, papers scattered over everywhere, why, even the telephone is knocked over. And look at those filing cabinets. Billy, somebody's been in them, too. Say, it looks as though a cyclone had swept through the office. I'll bet the cyclone had two legs, Billy. Remember, somebody was looking outside through the shade when we came in the grounds. That's right. But where could he have gone to? (gasps) Look. I bet you he slipped out through the next room. The door is open. Come on, let's look. There's no one in here now. Nothing but Uncle Jim's shortwave radio set. Oh, of course he isn't here now. If he was a burglar or a prowler or someone who had no business here, he naturally would beat it the minute that he saw somebody coming. 
And I bet you he got out this way. He could have come in here as soon as he saw us and then gone into the hallway through that door and made his escape through the back of the building. Billy, hadn't we better telephone Uncle Jim at the laboratory right away? You bet we had. We'll use Uncle Jim's private wire, too. Hello? 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 What's the matter? That's funny. The telephone's as dead as a doornail. Gosh, I'll bet you the wires are cut. Oh, wait a second, I'll look. They're not cut here, Billy. Say, that's bad. That means that they've been cut from the outside, Betty. Every phone in the building will be dead. We can run over to the laboratory in the car. Come on, let's hurry. No, wait, I've got a better idea. Jack ought to be in on this. I'll bet you we can get him on Uncle Jim's shortwave transmitter. Jack told me he was going to work on his receiver this afternoon. I hope he's testing it and he'll pick up your signal. There. Now, as soon as the tubes warm up, we can transmit. There, they're warming up now. J.F. Hudson calling J.A. Hudson. J.F. Hudson calling J.A. Hudson. Hello, this is J.A. That you, Billy? That's Jack. He's answering. Tell him to come right over. Glad you called, Billy. It gives me a chance to test out my set. Oh, thank goodness it works. Why? What's the matter? Betty and I are over here at Uncle Jim's office at the plane factory. Uncle Jim isn't here. But somebody has been searching his papers, Jack. Gosh, the place is a wreck. Listen, Billy. You and Betty look around for clues, and I'll jump in the car and be right over. Oh, swell, Jack, and make it fast. Signing off. Gosh, he'll be over here in a couple of minutes, Betty. Come on, let's see what we can find. Everything's such a mess. It's going to be hard to find a clue. Well, oh, gee, Betty, when things are in a mess, it's easiest to find clues. I'll examine the desk, and you look over there, all over the rest of the room. Yeah, she didn't seem to leave much, did he? I mean, much of anything that'd give him away. Well, I can't find anything either. Maybe there's something by the window where he was looking through the shade. Billy. What's the matter? Find something? No, but there's a man outside standing by a car. He's looking at this window. Let me see. Move over just a little, Betty. There. Say, he does look suspicious, doesn't he? I don't remember ever seeing him before, Betty. Gosh, that's a high-powered car he's got, too. Billy. Maybe he's the man who was in here. Let's quick run out and see who he is before he gets away. Oh, he's jumped into his car, Billy. He's leaving. Well, can't we catch him in our car, Billy? Oh, not a chance, Betty. Gosh, my bus gets St. Vitus dance when it hits 40. Why, he's making 60 already. Oh, look, here comes Jack now. Hi, he did her. Hey, Jack. Did you see that car that just went by you? You mean that low slung job that was doing 60? That's the one. We think he got away in it. Who? The man who was rifling Uncle Jim's office. Boy, I wish I'd known I'd have forced him into the ditch. I can't catch him now. He's out of sight. He's been all through Uncle Jim's papers. The office has turned inside out. Did you find any clues, Billy? Gosh, not a thing, Jack. Maybe there's some fingerprints around. We didn't no, have time. fingerprints won't help much now. We can get them later anyway. Where's Uncle Jim? He's not here, Jack. We think he's at the Atomic Laboratory in Knobs Hill. And the telephone wires are cut here. They are. Gee, that oh, looks serious. Oh, let's go to the laboratory, Jack, and tell Uncle Jim. Anyway, we've got an important letter from the Philippines to deliver to him. You bet we'll go there, Betty. You two hop in my car and we'll run right over. Let me have that letter, Billy. Here you are, Jack. I won't promise to go as fast as that fellow did, but we'll go as fast as the law allows. But, Jack, do you know why Uncle Jim is spending so much time in the laboratory? Well, he's working with some other scientist on experiments in atom splitting, Betty. But why? Don't you remember what Uncle Jim taught us last year about atoms? They're the smallest possible particle of matter. And if you can split them, you release a tremendous amount of energy. That's right, Betty. And if Uncle Jim can find a way to use that energy... He can make engines a thousand times more powerful than a gasoline engine. Oh, Billy. Why, that sounds impossible. Well, it is impossible so far, but someday they'll do it. And Uncle Jim thinks it's going to be very soon. Oh, there's the top of Knob's Hill now. Jack, why is the laboratory built inside the hill? They built a huge cyclotron there. Well, for gosh sakes, what's a cyclotron? Well, it's something that generates hundreds of millions of volts. They bombard the atoms with this high voltage. So it's dangerous. Awfully dangerous. That's why they built the cyclotron in a rock chamber right in the middle of the hill. There's the door that leads into the hill right now. <gasps> Look, Jack. Look at that car parked there. Isn't that the same one that went by you so fast? You're right, Billy. The very same one. Oh, then maybe that same man is inside the laboratory now. Oh, Betty's in Uncle Jim's laboratory office now. Hold on. Get out quickly. We'll see if he's in there. 
I'll open the door for you, Betty. There's a long hallway, and Uncle Jim's office is at the other end. Come on, Billy. There's a light in his office, Jack. Uncle Jim must be there. Either Uncle Jim or that other chap. The door's closed, but somebody's in there. I can see his shadow through the glazed glass. Jumping chimney, Jack. That's not Uncle Jim in there. He's too thin. Soon find out. Look out, Billy. I'm going in. Say, who are you? What are you doing in here? Who are you? By what right you come in here? By what right? Say, we've got a lot more right here than you have. Jack, he is the same man who broke in Uncle Jim's office. He's done the same thing right here. Been all through Uncle Jim's papers and everything. Watch him closely, Jack. He's about to do something. I'm watching him, Betty. Now, you. How about explaining just what you're doing here, searching through those desks and files? What I do here is my business. I shall go now. Stand aside. Oh, no, you don't. Quick, Billy, close that door. Okay. You're not going to leave here until we get Uncle Jim. You'll find out why you're ransacking his papers. Stand aside, I tell you, or it will be the worst for you. I'm staying right here by this door. And you're not going out until we get Captain Fairfield. Betty, see if you can find Uncle Jim. He's probably... Oh, no, Jack! Get out of my way! I'm going Oh, no, it. you're not. Take that! Oh, oh, boy, Jack, a beauty. Boy, you gave it to him right in a chair. Oh, look out, Jack. He's picking up a chair. Will you stand aside now? Or shall I smash this chair over your head? Watch him, Jack. He looks dangerous. He is dangerous, but he's not going to get by us. Billy, when he swings at me, I'll duck and you go for his knees. But he may get you. No, I'll duck it. You give him the old tackle. Look out, he's coming. Okay. All right, you asked for it. Oh! I, I got him, Jack. Hold on to him, Billy. I've got him, too. Uh, you Hold his legs, Billy. I've got his arms pinned. Uh, Betty, lend a hand. Jack. Get that picture wire off the wall. Hurry, hurry, Jack. I'll stand on the desk and try to reach it. Don't keep on holding him, Billy. I've got his shoulders down on the floor. I'm holding him, Jack. He'll never break away from this hole. I got it. He's getting the wire from that picture. I got it. All right, Betty. Twist it around his ankles. Twist it tight now. Okay. I am, Jack. Tight as I can. Why good. Kill you. Climb on the desk and get the wire from another picture. Hurry up, Betty. Okay. Watch out, Jack. His arms are working loose. Well, no, you don't. Grab his other arm, Billy. Yeah, got it. up, boy. I'll sit on his head. Hurry up, Betty. We've got him. Oh, I dropped the picture, but I've got the wire. Oh, hurry up. We've got him for the moment. Here, wrap yeah. one end around his wrist. This way. Puts okay. it so it holds. Here, Billy, help me hold his arms together. All right, Jack. We've got I'll him now. to the other wrist, Betty. And a girl. Wrap it around and around. Yep. There you are. Let's get off him, Billy. He's Ooh. pressed up now. Gosh, that was a tussle, Jack. Well, Mr. Whoever you are, now I guess you'll wait until Uncle Jim comes. Uh, this is an outrage. You will pay for this. Well, if it's an outrage, why don't you yell for help? We aren't keeping you from yelling. I tell you, you will pay for this. I shall not forget. Let's look at those knots, Billy. Good job, Betty. They ought to hold him. And now let's find Uncle Jim and see what's going on here. Looks as though Jack and Billy and Betty have really stumbled into some excitement, doesn't it? But who is this mysterious stranger? And why is he interested in Uncle Jim's papers? Has Uncle Jim some important secret he's trying to guard? Listen in, all of you, at the same time tomorrow and see what happens inside Knobs Hill with Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Say, here's a riddle that's mighty easy to solve. How can you have a different breakfast every morning and yet have the same breakfast every morning? Well, the answer is as simple as ABC. It's a breakfast of champions. Now, let's say you had a bowl of Wheaties with milk and cream along with a big glass of orange juice this morning. All right. Then tomorrow you'll have Wheaties with milk and bananas. Next day you can top off your Wheaties with milk and sliced peaches and so on. It's always a breakfast of champions, no matter what Wheaties, milk and fruit combination you pick. And say, take it from me, variety like that helps make breakfast a real high spot in your day. Get Wheaties right away, and then remind Mother to fix you a different breakfast of champions every morning. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the brand. Won't you try? This is Franklin McCormick saying goodbye until tomorrow for General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, who have just presented another episode of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy. The best breakfast food in the land.